When I saw the episode, I was like, why did I apologize? I have nothing to apologize about. Hi, I'm Ella Bidet and welcome to Attitude Tea Time, where each week I'll be bringing you freshly brewed tea from the Drag Race UK Series 5's latest eliminee. This week, I'm joined by seven foot supermodel, Banksy. Hey, Lam. Hello, my darling, how are you? Oh, I'm all right, thank you, Kath. How are you? It's madness, honestly. I feel, I, I feel incredibly happy. I'm just very blessed that everyone's been so depressed by my evacuation from the series. <laughs> Yeah, I've seen I've seen so much support for you, Banksy. Honestly, it's been amazing. And I did see last night at your viewing party, you were wearing some butchered lamb realness. Are we going to get some lamb-based Banksy merch coming? Yes, you will. <laughs> oh yes. Yeah. There's loads coming. We've got some bits coming out. Um, I can't bloody wait. I've got more things to do, sweetheart. Oh, amazing. Now talking of this untucked moment, let's get into that. Do you think you were really as shit as Caramel? You were just as shit as me, babe. Baby, I was not just as no shit as you. Was shit, oh, that's fuck really? It. Nope. Really, girl? Fuck off. No, I think Cara was shitter. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we all knew that. I think the funny thing is that when you're wearing those big earmuffs, I had no clue what was going on, really. I thought I fabricated the whole thing. When I saw the episode, I was like, why did I apologize? I have nothing to apologize about. So how did you feel in that untucked moment um, when you left untucked? What was going through your head at that point? Well, I think with me, I'm not a person who likes to like scream in someone's face and fight. It's not like me. So when I kind of started doing that, I didn't feel like myself. So I just thought you need to just separate yourself from the situation, gather your thoughts, calm down, because you're going to get worse. And then you can come back in and actually articulate what you want to say. So in reality, how long did you step out for? Because we saw a cut version. It really was five minutes, because I remember being outside. I just shouted to one producer, get me a fag. And then some of the time, that took a minute, because I can smoke a fag like it's my job. And then basically walked back in. I remember, though, that when I was walking back in, they were like, go in, go in. And I went, no. I'm going to stand outside and listen to what they're saying. All I heard was Dee Dee say, she's having a hard day. And then I was like, oh. okay, I'll go in. I'll go in now. <laughs> she's had a hard day, bless her. <laughs> who, who in that moment was your biggest supporter? You know what? I think people didn't want to step into the firing line. I think some people, I know that definitely Kate didn't give a shit. So Kate was just like, this is my mate. She's obviously very upset. More than if it's right or wrong, she's just upset. So we should just be like, helping her out with that. Good on Kate. Well, good on you as well, because I think to step back into that room after leaving, that took a lot to do that and to, to, to kind of get over it really quick, like well done. Um, how was the fan response to to the sort of the, the bickering that went on? It's nice to know that you're you're being supported from an online perspective. But I don't like the negativity that got throughout uh, Vicky and Cara. There was some mm. really horrible stuff sent to them. There's some really nasty things put online. And I just don't think that's fair or nice, especially when we, all three of us, have processed this. You know, this was months and months and months ago. We've had all this happen to us. We've talked through it all. We've gone for dinner. We've chatted. Da, da, da. We're not really asked about it anymore. The fans forget that you're there to create a TV show as well. It's heightened. Mm. It's a pressure cooker. So what went on wouldn't necessarily happen in real life, right? No. I'd just pour a drink on her and walk off. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, <laughs> let's get into last night's episode, which was pretty epic. What did you make of Vicky's read of you in the reading challenge? Babes, I'm glad that we've cleared the hatchet. Now, the only thing is, shall I fuck you or feed you? Jesus! Um, <laughs> it was bad, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. So would you would you rather she fuck you or feed you? I'd rather neither, neither, none of the above, none of the above. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't quite write and then, sorry. Oh, bringing it all back. Um, <laughs> no, I think, yeah, I think it was, wasn't was well cooked, that joke, was it? It wasn't incubated, right? Uh, yeah. So, yeah, I think I remember me and Kate, they cut out part of the edit, me and Kate just going, not the children, not the <laughs> children. Let's get on to the panto. What did you make of watching your panto performance back? I just thought it was really silly. I loved being silly. I think... 
It could have been better, but guess what? We didn't have uh, a week-long tech week. Do you know what I mean? It, it happens if you do the route, you learn your lines, do the rules, you rehearse it once you get it out there. You know what I mean? So it was just as it was. And I could have yeah. done better with more time, but I really enjoyed it. And actually, it's fun doing that and being covered in latex and then only having an hour to do my makeup for the runway. So, like, peeling it off. And then oh, whoa. Like, oh, yeah, it was mad. Oh, wow. So you had a really, really quick turnaround to get ready for the runway. How long in reality did you have to rehearse that musical? Because there was a lot going on. I think we had max two days. So like with vocal rehearsals, um, dance rehearsals one on one and then full full run through. I think we only ran through it twice as a group. Oh. And all of us yeah. putting our parts together. So it wasn't a lot of rehearsal time, but how big that that production is. Yeah, well, I, I loved your singing in it. I thought you've got such a good voice. Talking of voices, how was it lip syncing to Susan Boyle? I think I really resembled her in many ways. <laughs> um, <no. laughs> I, it was really, you know, what? I love that song and I love doing that lip sync because unlike other lip sync choices where you can do, you know, your backflips, your flip flops, your jump kicks and not know any of the words, this yeah. one, you have to know every single breath that woman takes. Very true. That, do you think the right person went home? No, because I went home. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> um, your exit was so iconic. That, I've never seen that done before. You made everybody watch you go down that runway one more time. But did you have any more alternative exit lines? Did you think of that on the spot? I thought of that as I was walking up to do it. Like, literally, I was like, you've got to say something good because you, you didn't think you were going out. Okay, think of something fast. I was either between, let me walk the runway one more time, or I was going to go through, I'm not going, but I'm not actually going home. I'm, you can do these there, just send, she, she can walk out if she wants, but I'm staying now, I'm staying. <laughs> and I thought it'd be more respectful and might lead to an all-stars if I maybe say, thank you for this opportunity and let me do this, please. And she gave a little yeah. smirk and she was like, yeah, of course. Yeah. No, I loved it. Bruce's reaction was like, yeah. Go for it. Yeah. Well Did you enjoy seeing Ginger take the win after Vicky basically saying she was going to win? How did Vicky think she was going to win? <laughs> no, it's that it's the de delusion of of the series, maybe. Maybe, but I also think it's that I, I'm not sure if it all linked up, but I would have instantly put Ginger in the top because it was like reading challenge. She was great. Musical. She was great. And then the look was great. So. She was topping everything, you know what I mean? And what about the armless look, the runway that, that Ginger did, the armless look, what do you make of that? All I'll say is, is that I'm so glad I went home before we went back into the workroom and she took that off because the smell would have been foul. Like a baked potato woman. Like a oh. very, very, very moist lady underneath all that. Oh, Ginger, she stinks, but she's armless, honestly. Um, I have to ask you, <laughs> what would your Snatch Game have been? And if you're going to tell me, can I have a little taste of what it would be? Okay, so it was a layered Snatch Game. I was going to be Banksy, mm -hmm. the artist, a balaclava and like a fuzzy. And then the whole time I was doing Snatch Game was trying to figure out who Banksy is as an audience. So it was like, and the secret was that Banksy was Lorraine Kelly the entire time. And so Banksy had a Scottish accent and loved the gays and was spray painting things on the card. I need to hear some Lorraine Kelly then. Give me um, it. So it, was, it was just me, literally in a balaclava, going, Hi, hey, it's me, Banksy. I'm definitely not Lorraine Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> What does it mean for you to be able to provide non-binary representation on TV? God, it's great, isn't it? I mean, I live in a little bubble, so my life is living in Manchester, a very queer oriented city, very left wing, very fun. Um, but when you go on the telly, you realise, oh, this is going out to a lot of people who might not understand. So it's my responsibility to make them understand as much as I can. I think I did that as well. It was I was very genderless. I dread, my confessional look was the most femme I've ever felt in my entire life. And mm -hmm. it just was enjoyable to be like, this is this is one version of the trans experience. And Cara is a completely different version of the trans experience. Kate's non-binary. Kate's a completely different one as well. We had three trans people on that cast, you know what I mean? And that was just really important. Yeah. Was that going into Drag Race, did you feel a responsibility to, to represent yourself and others that are like you? 
I didn't feel it from a non-binary perspective, really, but I did feel it from a Manchester perspective. I felt like mm -hmm. I felt like when I walked in, I was like, I'm the only well, me and Naomi are the only true, like real living in the North Northerners right now. And how's the reaction been to your discussions about how your sexuality has evolved over time and with your partner as well? Because that was a real open discussion. About six months into our relationship, all confided to me that she was trans. And then that made me think, am I really attracted to men or am I attracted to a person? And I had to get my head around it. The reaction to that has been amazing. I've had people message me on, on Instagram and talk to me in real life going, I'm trying to go through a similar situation. I don't know how my partner's going to react to the advice or my partner's left me. I feel alone. I feel like I can't do this anymore. And that's just the point is that as trans people, no experience is the same. But the one thing I want people to realize is that being trans is not a one, it's not a, a lonely road. It, people make it look like a lonely road, but you can have a partner, you can have a support group. Yeah, and I think with, with everything going on in the country at the minute, with the government and, and trans folk, I think that was such an important discussion for you to have. So yeah. well done you for doing that. I think that's brilliant. Thank We're going to finish off this little chat with a quick fire round. So I just want you to tell me the first word or sentence that comes into your head don't okay. overthink it. RuPaul. Drag Race. Vicky Vivacious. Uh, Caramel. Lovely. Dee Delicious. Neck. Panto. Horrible. <laughs> Untucked. Spicy. <laughs> Lambs. Tesla. Hell of a day. Really gorgeous and beautiful and pretty and really talented and everything. Oh my God. Thank you so much, Banksy. You've got that last one correct. Um, I just want to say thank you so much for chatting to me here. Attitude Tea Time, it's been a pleasure. And uh, I'm going to see you really, really soon. I just know it. Love you lots. See you soon, love. Thank you. Bye. Thanks for watching Attitude Tea Time. Join me next week for more scalding hot tea from Drag Race UK. Bye. Thank you.